Hello everyone and welcome to our channel Cook Jeff. Today we'll be solving the problem pizza party with a difficulty level of cakewalk. Let's look at the problem statement. Here it's given that Raj is having a pizza party and has ordered some pizzas. Each pizza is in some lowercase Latin letters. We want to find out whether some pizza has the same quantity as the sum of quantities of all other pizzas. This is the main crux of the problem statement. We are supposed to find out whether some pizza has the same quantity or count as the sum of quantities of all other pizzas. Let's understand this with our test case. Here t equal to 1 denoting there is only one test case and this test case consists of this string here. Now if I write down this string here, it's a, a, b, c, a, d. Now what is the count of pizza named a? The count of pizza named A is nothing but 3. Why you ask? Because there is 1A, 2A and 3A in this whole string. So the count of A is 3. Now what is the count of the remaining pizzas? The count of the remaining pizzas is basically 1, 2 and 3. In other words, what does the problem statement ask? We need to find whether some pizza has the same quantity as the sum of quantities of all other pizzas. In this case, the count of pizza A is 3 and sum of the quantities of the remaining pizzas is 3. In this case, both of them match. Since both of them match, we are supposed to output yes. Now, you might say once we find out the count of a particular pizza, how to find out the sum of quantities of the remaining pizzas without a brute force method? You can just do n minus the count of the pizza what you just found out. For example, in this case, we found out that for pizza A, the count is 3. So, what will be the sum of the quantities of the remaining pizzas? It is nothing but the length of this string minus the count of A. So, that's what I said while we are checking. Count of remaining is nothing but length of the string minus count of the pizza we are checking. If both of these counts match, it means that we have found our criteria for outputting yes. Hope this approach is clear. So far what we have is for every character we are going to find the count of that character in the string and we are going to check whether the count of the character is equal to the sum of quantities of the remaining pizzas which is nothing but n minus count of ch. If you remember n is basically the length of the string. So this is what the criteria that we need to check. At any point for any character if count of the character is equal to n minus count of that character we know that we need to output yes. In other words if I write it count of the character should be equal to n minus count of ch. When is this satisfied? When is this criteria basically satisfied? It is when count of ch is nothing but n by 2. And why is this you ask? Because take this count to the other side. We have 2 count ch equal to n. So count ch is nothing but n by 2. If this criteria is satisfied, it means that we need to output yes. If this criteria is not satisfied for any character, we need to output no. So this is the main approach we'll be following. Now we know that we need to check which character has a frequency of L by 2 in order to output yes. But how do we find out the frequency or a count of a particular character? Let's look at different approach. First approach we'll look at is the brute force approach that involves two loops. In the first loop what we do is nothing i equal to 0, i less than l, i plus plus. We do care ch equal to s of i. Then in the inner loop what we do is we process all the characters of the string and we check how many times the condition satisfied that s of j is basically ch. If this condition is satisfied we increment the count. It makes sense to explain this with an example. So let's take the example of a, b, c, a, a. In this case, we are currently at index 0. So, care ch will be s of 0. That will be a. Because a is a character present in index 0 of the string s. Then we have an inner loop that processes every character of this string. And it checks how many times the condition s of j equal to a is satisfied. In this case, this condition is satisfied 3 times. That is why once this loop, inner loop ends, count will be set to basically 3. Denoting that a occurs thrice in our string. That is why we reset count each time so that in the next iteration count can be uh, refreshed and then again you can use the variable or you can use an array. But this is a brute force approach and it is O of L square because we have two loops. When L is huge like 10 to the power of 5, this first approach will not work. Now in the second case, let's look at the frequency array approach. In this approach, we have a count array that is of size 26, meaning that if you use zero indexing, it has index, indices 0. 25. Index 0 will store how many times character A occurs in your string. Index 1 will store how many times B occurs in your string. Similarly, 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 index 25 will store how many times Z occurs in your string. So here what we're doing is we are running a loop for i equal to 0, i less than l, i plus plus. Count is now an array, remember, of size 26. Below count is s of i minus 97 plus plus. So what does this basically mean? 
Let's take it with an example. We know that we need some way to map A to 0. We need some way to map B to 1. We need some way to map Z to 25. But you know the ASCII value of A is 97. For B is 98. For Z it's 122. So what we essentially do is, we will subtract 97 from this to get 0. Subtract 97 from this to get 1. Subtract 97 from this to get 25. So this approach is nothing but we are going to count up S of I minus 97. We do this to map the character from A to Z into indices from 0 to 25 that we can use in our count tally. For example, in this here example string given here, we have A, B, A, A. Initially, we are at character A. So what you do initially is nothing but count of A minus 97 plus plus. So A is basically 97 in ASCII. So 97 minus 97 is 0. So I'll promptly go here. You'll increment this 0 to 1 now. In indicating that uh, A has been uh, encountered once till now in our string. Then we go to B. Then we, we encounter B. We do count of B minus, minus 97 plus plus. So we know the ASCII value of B is 98. 98 minus 97 is 1. So now we'll go here and increment count of 1 to be 1 indicating that we have encountered a B. Then we again encounter A. We know that whenever we encounter an A, this expression S of I minus 97 will evaluate to 0. So we'll go here to count of 0 and increment the value present there by 1. And now it's 2, indicating that till now we have encountered two A's in our string. Then again we encounter an A. So when you do S of I minus 97, you get A or you get 0. And then you go to count of 0 and increment it. And now it becomes 3, indicating that till now you've encountered three A's and one B in your string. As you see, this approach is much more efficient than the previous approach. You could also use an unordered map approach, which is basically very similar. But in unordered map, it's a key value pair. So you map characters to integers. And so you do not need to uh, map the characters from A to Z to 0 to 25. In this case, what you do is count of S of I plus plus. In this case, for the same string A, B, A, A, what you will do is in your unordered map called count, what you will do is count of S of I plus plus. First, this is A. So you do count of A plus plus, so count of A becomes 1. Then when you encounter B, you do count of B plus plus, so count of B becomes uh, basically 1. Then again you encounter A, so you do count of A plus plus and count of A becomes 2. Then you again you encounter A, so you do count of A plus plus and count of A becomes 3. In this case, the only difference between these two approaches is here you use an array of uh, size 26 and here you use an unordered map, so you do not need to convert the characters into their integer counterpart. Now let's look at a few mistakes to avoid. I have taken this submission from the submissions page and what they have done is they have taken the string as input and then they declare an array of size 26. This is following our frequency array approach. Why is the array of size 26? Because remember we are going to map the characters from A to Z to the indices 0 to 25 and the values present at those indices denote the count of the particular character. That is why we first converted the characters to their index values by subtracting 97 and then we went to the value present at that index and incremented it denoting the count of a particular character. That is why when you have an unordered map you can bypass the first step of subtracting 97 and you can just do count of S of I++. So when you have an unordered map, you don't have to SFI minus 97. Why don't you have to convert the, you know, uh, the uh, character present at this index to the index values from 0 to 25 in an unordered map? Because in an unordered map, you're going to map keys in the form of characters to values in the form of integers, which means that you are allowed to do something like count of A plus plus which is not allowed in an integer array because you cannot have an integer array whose index value is basically a character. If you have an integer array, the index value have to be integers and also the value present have to be integers. That is why if you use a frequency array of size 26, you need to convert the characters to the index values and then increment the count present there. Hope this uh, distinction is again clear. So what they've done here is they have set A to be the length of the string. Then they build the frequency array perfectly. That is ARR of str of i minus 97 plus plus. Then what they do is they run a loop from 0 to 26, which means that they're checking from A to Z. Is there any character whose count is basically length of the string by 2? If this is satisfied, they set flag is 1 and they break out, which again makes sense. At the end, they check if flag is 1, they output yes, otherwise they output no. Till now, it looks like it is a perfect approach. So is there any case where this submission will fail? Yes, there is. Can you pause the video and find it out? What if you have a string like this? Let's say that the, uh, the length of the string is 5. 
the length of the string is 5 and then after you build your count array ARR of 0 we denote how many times A occurs so this case A occurs twice ARR of 1 will denote how many times B occurs so B occurs once ARR of 2 will denote how many times C occurs C occurs once and ARR of 3 denotes how many times uh, you know D occurs and D occurs once this is your frequency array we are going to check for every character from A to Z, which is the indices from 0 to 25. If the count uh, at that particular index is equal to length of the string by 2, length is 5, remember, the length is odd. When you check here, when you check for ARR of 0, ARR of 0 is 2, and length of the string by 2 is nothing but 5 by 2. This is integer division, 5 by 2 ends up being 2. This condition is satisfied, you set plug is 1 break, and you output yes corresponding to this test case. But if you have an odd length string, is it ever possible for you to have a count of the character to be equal to length of the string by 2? It is impossible for the condition count of ch equal to length of the string by 2 to be satisfied if your length is an odd integer. That is why for this uh, particular test case, the output has to be false because the count of the, you know, a is 2 here and the count of the remaining characters is basically 3 here. But here they are checking for length of the string by 2, which ends up being 2 because L is 5. So we need to uh, handle the condition there. If L mod 2 equal to 1, which means that if your L is an odd integer, just straight away output no. So I hope this approach is clear. Let's look at the C++ code for this problem. I take the string str as input and I have int n as str.length. I have an unordered map called count that basically is a key value mapping between the characters and the count as the values corresponding to those characters. I do for care ch in str count of ch++. This part is building my frequency array or basically updating my count unordered map. So after this is done, this for loop is done, I have the counts of basically every single character present in my string. Then I just iterate over every character and I check whether there is a character whose count is n by 2. If this is satisfied, I set bare as true and I break out. This second loop can be optimized by just iterating through a to z and then checking whether there is a character in a to z whose count is n by 2. Because in this case, if you iterate through every character of the string and check this, even though it's correct, you might end up checking us for a single character multiple times. For example, in this example, you will check a count of a is basically n by 2. Then again, you'll end up checking count of a is n by 2 or not. Then again, you'll check count of a is n by 2 or not. But however, the overall time complexity, even if you optimize it in this approach, will be O of length of the string because you anyway have a loop here that runs through every character of the string. You cannot optimize this loop here for building the count array. Then you check. Remember to include this condition. If n mod 2 is equal to 1, it means that n or the length of the string is odd. If the length of the string is odd, you can straight away output no. Otherwise, if where is set to true, you output yes. Otherwise, if where is set to false, you output no. Let's submit this C++ solution and see if we get an AC. As we see, we get an AC for C++. Let's look at the Python solution for this problem. We take the number of test cases as input and then for every test case, we take the string as input. Then we have L as the length of the string and then we immediately check if the length of the string is odd. The length of the string is odd, we output no and then we continue on to the next test case. However, if the length of the string is even, we iterate to every character in the string and we check whether the count of a particular character is equal to L by 2. The double slash here denotes integer division. If this is satisfied, we output yes and then break out. Otherwise, in the else part, we have output no. This else part will be executed if no character has the count L by 2. So, in the worst case, we output no. However, in this Python solution, we adopt a more brute force kind of approach because the constraints of this problem allow even a brute force approach because the length of the string can go up to 1000. So, this here, we ask the Python count function. In the Python code, we ask the count function to tell us how many times characters occurs in the string. So, we submitted it and as you see, you get an AC for Python 2. Hey guys, that was it. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you haven't yet done this, this is a gentle reminder to hit that subscribe button. If you're interested in complicated programming and data structures, this channel is a one-stop solution for you. See you in the next video. Bye.